What's going on, Airsofters? I am your host, Spinkster Cell. So what I'm bringing for you today is kind of a really cool pistol. This is the limited edition GNG GTP9 in rose gold. Now I got this gun used on hop up for a lower price than retail, and these are currently out of stock because these are a limited edition item. So the only place I can find it was on the app called Hop Up, and I negotiated on the price to get it for a little bit cheaper. I think I paid around 150 or a little bit less. If, I, if it was a different number, I'll put it on screen, whatever it was. So the owner didn't really use it too much. It does scratch really easily, so I'm not even sure if I'm going to airsoft with it very much. But I am going to do it for YouTube, of course, so at least one gameplay with this. And uh, if, it, if it doesn't get too scratched up, we'll do more. But um, as you can see, he included this kind of cool um, case that it came in. So, you know, it's got the... The lens on it which i should probably clean it looks really dirty but uh, anyway let's open it up it even has a little tiny lock on there which is funny but uh yep that opens up um the styrofoam's all ruined but uh i can change that if i wanted to so the gun does come with two back straps i actually don't know how to interchange them because uh i would need to use the the fatter one here but um it comes with two so i am trying out a new filming method um i'm indoors i got um the light off above me and I do have this little light here which I could use um just let me know which one you like more the natural lighting or you want more of a studio thing can't decide myself I think this is a little too much light but um since the gun is so shiny and so cool I want to really show that off in this video so as you can see here's the magazine completely plated or just I don't know painted however they did it it's a really nice look all the uh the rose gold on this gun so the entire magazine is done in rose gold it leaves fingerprints and um it gets scratched pretty easy but anyway it's a full metal magazine this is gng at the top and the feeding lips are metal and so is the follower and i like how those are also done in rose gold so like the whole thing is just perfectly done it's look really nice so there's no gas in there the green um valve thingy and then in the very bottom you can see it says gng they put some trademarks plastic thing um that's actually really durable plastic feels really good so um that's the magazine comes with just one okay then we have the pistol let's pull this out of the uh shitty styrofoam here and we'll probably get move that we'll probably move that out of the way soon but um here's the gun the gng gtp9 now the thing that's kind of lame about this gun is it's a polymer slide and um the reason i thought this gun was cool not only because you know rose gold is just a a cool premium Premium plating of metal type, I think. It's just cool. Um, at SHOT Show, when they were showing off the G&G booth, it had a full metal slide, fully done in the rose gold, and then all of these parts here were done in, like, normal gold. But it had a full metal rose gold slide with a full auto selector switch, which this one, sadly, did not come with. So I thought that was a little weird that they would, um, they would go with polymer. So And they made it more expensive, too, when it came out, which was funny. But anyway... This is the gun. It's in uh, pretty good condition for being used, just a little dirty. Um, this got a little messed up from the, the glass case actually touching it, or plexiglass, whatever it is. Um, only other thing I noticed is that the little plate here is like kind of coming off just a tiny bit, but not nothing to worry about there. Um, I just showed the iron sets already. They're really cool, the way they got this strange, um, strange shape to them. It just reminds me of something from like Assassin's Creed, like the... I don't know where I'm going with that, but um, you can see it's got a thread protector on there, and that's also done in the rose gold. Um, I don't like to rack back the slide too much because you can see it's it's got a little uh, fading away right there. It's getting worn away, but we'll do it for the YouTube and eventually for the gameplay. Makes a pretty good sound despite being plastic. And then we can lock it back with the ambidextrous um, slide release. So that's pretty cool. Um, definitely a very nice looking pistol if you have a girlfriend who plays airsoft or anyone who just enjoys this or cosplay or you're collectors you know you collect um unique airsoft guns because once this goes and it's all sold out and no one's selling them on hop up of any no one's selling them on hop up anymore um it might be something that you'll look back on and and regret not buying so i think any of us will look back in our lives and regret the things we didn't buy this gun definitely had to add it to my collection of rare airsoft guns so um it's a decent weight it is a full polymer this is the gt p9 i think they have full model uh full metal versions of this um for sale 
Um, if we're going to talk more about the pistol, we might as well go over everything that makes the GTP9 a little bit different than, say, like a Glock, because that's pretty much what this would be. But um, we'll just go over the gun. All of the rose gold components would be the entire barrel, um, the guide rod as well, the sights, which are painted white, the ambidextrous release, um, the ambidextrous mag release, which looks really cool, works really well, kind of like a USP, an HK gun. Um, the full magazine like we saw, and then the um, safety button right here is also all the gold. Um, the trigger feels a little cheap on the uh, the safety part right here. I don't know why, it just, um, I thought it was cracked when I first got it, but it's just like a little, that little black marking there. I thought that was a crack, but it's not. Um, so the trigger, it feels a little flimsy, a little cheap. I'm just worried about that just a little bit. Otherwise, um, I'm not really worried about anything else besides the paint getting like rubbed away or scratched off. Um, cool features, we got the slide cuts, forward cocking serrations, unique um, sights. The ambidextrous magazine release is also very cool, ambidextrous slide release. Um, very good for left-handed shooters as well, you know, obviously. Um, I think this is a make-believe gun that G&G came up with. I don't think there's, there's probably not a real GTP9. So it's probably designed good for a left-handed because it can, you know, it's got room for ejection on both sides for a real gun if this was real. Um, it's got a Picatinny rail. Let me go grab my flashlight. So we have my rec replica Surefire here, which has randomly stopped working for me. I don't know why, but um, let's see how it looks on the gun. It's a tight fit. It's really locked on there, so it locked right on the slot. Perfect fitment for the replica Surefire, which should be a one-to-one -one with your real Surefires. Um, but I doubt anyone who has a real Surefire is trying to buy a pink and white gun. Um, so let's remove that real quick. I think when I play Airsoft, I'll most likely have that equipped, so it'll go into my holster. Um, the gun's really comfortable. It's a bit thin for me right now. I can't figure out how to take this, uh, this grip off here. It says push on that. You could take that out. This is the key for the hop-up, which is on some weird new G&G &G thing where you gotta stick it in the actual barrel. That's kind of odd to me, you know, airsofting for, you know, so long and, and like my first airsoft guns were KWA Glocks. That's just an odd thing for me, adjusting my hop up through the barrel. It's just funny. Um, so that only has one way of going in. I assume there's a way of like, I think you just pretty much yank it off. But when I tried, it just felt like it was going to break. Um, not that it's flimsy or anything, but like if I'm just like really going full send on it. It's just, I don't know. It's just not really feeling correct. I think there's there's some weird way you got to do it. But uh, correct me if you have a GTP9. So other things I could say about this gun is that it shoots pretty good. I've shot it just a little bit in the backyard and it shoots pretty nice. Let's take a look at the front. So we have the thread protector, which is, uh, you know, obviously metal as well. Um, and then we have the threads. I'm not sure the threads though. If I have my suppressor that goes on to 14 millimeter, um, I think it's counterclockwise, you know, just the regular threading for all airsoft. Well, clearly you need some type of adapter in order to use this. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'll probably just Google it or pull it up the specs on the iPad because we're going to do that in a minute right now. But uh, let's get that back on there. You can see it has a uh, an O-ring so that you don't over tighten it and that it's also a snug fit. Um, this is a new one. I think this came out 2020, I believe. Um, these serrations are kind of fin shark style kind of, you know, fins. Um, let's take a look at this, this stuff in the front. So if we're talking trademarks, we can just look up front here. We have G&G &G armament there on the slide. 9 by 19 so they're pretending this is a real gun. Um, I don't know if those are unique serial numbers. Um, there's this made in Taiwan right there. Um, the name of the gun in the corner, and that's the same on both sides. So over here we just have a warning, and that's it. So other unique features about the gun is that up here we do have a like kind of... Um, loaded chamber indicator. No, up here we have a fake extractor for if this was a real gun. So they really thought up all that random stuff. So on the inside here, you could see you have a green GNG hop up. And so far, I haven't really noticed much about um, about range or anything. So we do not have any type of hidden full auto selectors in there. It's just a regular Glock style setup we got going, and then we can see our trigger. I'm not really too fond of the trigger. I mean, so long as it does not break, it feels good. But otherwise, it just feels pretty light. Um, 
It's not very, not very strong, I would say. But otherwise, I don't really think this is going to break. So this gun is modeled pretty much like a Glock. So let's see how we disassemble it. Real smooth and easy. All right, cool. Um, here we have our internals, which look amazing. Um, there's some kind of buffer there, which is made of polymer. Same material as the rest of the slide. Um, that's pretty much normal gas blowback stuff going on in here. Nothing unique or special. Besides the G and G special, <laughs> the special G and G um, hop up adjustment through the barrel, I guess. So this doesn't really weigh too much. Pretty light. Um, and then you could see your internals. Pretty standard stuff. And I think this has been lubed from the factory, unless the previous owner has done any lubing. I do see a finger. Oh, that's probably my fingerprint. Um, anyway, so let's get the gun back together. I'm not going to bother taking the barrel out. And it locked just like that. I think you don't have to rack it again. It's just, it clicked. Cool. So here we are on the fabled evike.com. Now I am not sponsored by evike, so I can't really suggest you use them. And obviously this gun is going to be out of stock, but they have a decent setup on their website for looking at pictures and all of that. So I think I paid about 150. Um, the only problem is nobody's going to have this on retail. So you have to get it used on like hop up, like I said. Um, so the GTP nine, they got really, you know, they got really excited about this gun. And they introduced it in a lot of colors here, but let me see for the black, it's only $120. So G&G claims that it has an FPS of 300 to 330, which is believable. Um, one of the sad things about this is that mine did not include the, um, the polymer case. I don't know if he just lost it, got this gun some secondhand way, or, you know, he got rid of it. Um, if that's something you're into collector-wise, not having it included kind of sucks if you're a collector it's not a good thing um so we have 12 millimeter counterclockwise threads for that um, barrel if you were wondering 27 plus one rounds in the magazine and other than that no full auto on this one um i thought there was a full auto where's the full auto okay so this one is no that, that's not full auto either but if you wanted a slightly different one this is what it looks like with the slide cuts done to it, but um, I don't know if this one's metal. I'm trying to find the metal one for you guys real quick. All right, you guys, I found it. So I'm on Red Wolf. Um, I think there's other places to buy it, but this one claims to have a metal slide. How about that? How about that? A metal slide on the GTP9. So that's what you can come to expect. It was $160. Um, I don't know why G&G is treating this thing like it's some kind of uber premium item, but it is a new design they came up with. They seem to be pretty happy with it, or pretty proud of it, like a flagship pistol almost. Oh dang, here's one with a red dot. Now if you've seen one of my other newest videos, I have just gotten a little red dot. And so if I can mount it on the GTP9, that would look awesome. Okay, hold on, we got another one. This looks pretty sick. So we got a mag extension and the RMR attached to that. So we're getting some cool ideas for this gun. Although it is going to be my collector's piece, like I mentioned, so I can't really state I'd be doing too much air softening with this gun. Um, if anyone's watching um, from retailers and they like to sponsor me and maybe send me the other versions of the GTP9, or if um, G&G is watching, we can do that. Um, this is the SHOT Show version of the gun. Um, the picture looks terrible though. So this is the picture of the gun um, from SHOT Show. As you can see, major, it's it's not the same gun uh, whatsoever. Not that I'm extremely disappointed with what we got, but I mean, like, come on, this is what we got excited about. Look at this thing. I mean, the whole thing is rose gold. And um, yeah, I gotta admit, I like rose gold. If you're into cars, um, if you've seen any of the 370 videos, we got rose gold rims for that. So there's gonna be a whole video dedicated to that if you want that. I mean, I know this airsofters don't really care for, for cars very much, but um, my channel has no rules, so I'm gonna do whatever I want. Um, so anyway, we have gold on the actual bits, and, you know, instead of the rose gold. So that, that's the changes that have been done. And then this one was um, select full auto. So that was a key difference there. Uh, last thing I'm gonna show you is the case itself, since I didn't mention that. Um, the case looked pretty, pretty nice, gotta admit. It, uh, you know, it had the entire logo from G&G &G done in fancy rose gold. 
So that is just a little bit of tech specs. So that is the GTP9 in rose gold. I'm not trying to make a 20 minute video here, but I haven't edited it yet. So it could be 20 minutes, who knows? Let me know if you're enjoying this video. I haven't been making many videos. Things have been pretty tragic last year and uh, this year I just haven't been very motivated. Um, the views have been pretty low on some of the videos. So I've had this gun in my possession as well as the other new rifle for several months now and I have not made a video on them until now. Um, so let me know if you're enjoying it because I will have a video on an AG next and then a whole new airsoft loadout, a Russian kit, a little sneak peek if you made it to the end of this one. That's what's to come. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to play Airsoft again for the first time in 2022 since, I don't know, over a year since I played Airsoft. So wish me luck for lots of kills on the field, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more and some gameplay. Leave a like.